In 2017, Friends of Nevada Wilderness partnered with the Bureau of Land Management to work on getting dark sky recognition for the Massacre Rim Wilderness Study Area. This work involved driving around all night on bad roads, with brief stops to measure the brightness of the sky. Massacre Rim is part of a deeply dark area around the tri-state border of Nevada, Oregon, and California. In March 2019, Massacre Rim was formally recognized as a dark sky sanctuary. The best part of this designation is the opportunity it creates to share dark skies with others, as we did with our friends at PBS Reno earlier this year. By shifting to red, we're shifting away from that daylight color of light, and it allows those, our eyes to start slowly adjusting. There's another aspect of darkness too, and that is, you know, we are creatures of this earth. And for most of our existence as humans, for the last 50,000 years, we have lived in these patterns of daylight and darkness. Our bodies need that. And with all the artificial light we bring into our life, we're not getting that. They find out when people get out into the wilderness, one of the best remedies they get is having dark nights. And when that happens, your body's circadian rhythm starts kicking in, you're resting better at night, and you just feel better. So if you're gonna go out and have a dark sky experience, or go out and explore dark skies, what, what are the, some of the things we can do? Well, one of the amazing things today is the cameras that we have. Even our cell phones have really good cameras. And they can take dark sky pictures because what's gonna happen is our eyes adjust to the, the darkness and open up. You're gonna see incredible things out there. You can capture that with your camera. Dark sky photography allows you to take a little longer exposures and it'll capture even more than you see. What did you bring tonight to capture that? Well, I've got my DSLR camera. So the first, first thing I did is I rolled up the ISO to about 3200. Then I've got the uh, aperture at F2, 8, which is just wide open. And then I've got 15 seconds up here for the exposure. And then you just let it go. And 15 seconds later, it'll flash up with the image on the screen. This is how Kirk's time-lapse recording turned out. Kirk and the Friends of Nevada Wilderness shared some of the photos and video they've taken of night skies over the years. And you can see that even though everyone is looking at the same sky, the result of their photography is anything but redundant. I brought a small telescope so we can zoom in. We have Jupiters up there, very clear, Saturn's on the side, a little bit of Scorpio. And with a telescope, we should be able to see some of the banding on Jupiter and possibly wow. the rings on Saturn. And it's a very small telescope. You don't need much. Binoculars, if you've got a good pair of binoculars, you can just lay back and just prowl the skies. Oh, that's cool. And the, those binoculars will 10 times as many stars as you can see with the naked eye. I can't wait to see the, light, the sky light up. This is going to be great. So, so we guess, probably should turn off the bright lights that are in say, our faces I, I and check it out. I guess if we want to see things light up, we actually have to shut down, right? Yeah, we do, unfortunately. All right. All right. All right. And give your eyes that time to adjust, and we'll see what we can see. Cool. All right, cool. That's Jupiter up there. It's not real sharp, but you can definitely see the ball and see the three moons okay. off to either side. Oh, wow. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, and that's just a really small telescope. That is really neat. You know, part of the experience too is I can hear the coyotes starting to sing mm -hmm. out there. It's just a cool way to enjoy the night.